Let's start with a simple one. How many emails did I get today? Hmm. It's a little disappointing. ChatGPT just rolled out its MCP capabilities, which basically means you can now connect it to tons of apps, but it might not be the upgrade you've been waiting for. In this video, I'll show you how you can set it up, access it, and then I'll talk about the pros and cons of using it and why you may or may not want to today. And if you get value from this type of video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want even more free resources, you can just click the link below, head over to my free school community where we have more than 4,500 members who are actively engaging and sharing about AI automation. We also give away templates for every single build that we do on YouTube. And once again, it is completely free. So let's go ahead and dive on in. So to access this is actually really simple. All you're gonna do is go into ChatGPT, come up to your profile in the upper right and go to settings. You're gonna see a section called connectors. Now in this right away, you're gonna notice that there's a bunch of apps that you can connect to it. I'm gonna use the basic ones. So we've got Gmail, I'm gonna connect it. And it's gonna pop up with this notification saying, hey, this could be really unsafe. Please make sure you know who the developer is and make sure that you feel safe with them having your information. So this is actually really important. And that's because MCP exposes you to a lot more risk than you may be exposed to previously. So for this one, obviously I'm okay with Google. I'm gonna go ahead and continue. And I'm gonna select the account that I wanna use and continue. And I'm gonna do the same for calendar and drive. Once these are connected, you can click into any of them and manage them and disconnect them right here if you want to, but they're set up and ready to go. Now, when we head back to our prompting interface, you can tell that there's not really anything there about the apps or what's connected. And that's because the only way to access these currently through GPT is by accessing the deep research. And when you do that, you can select which sources you wanna use um, when conducting this deep research. And this is where we get into one of the first major cons that I've found. Let's say, for example, that I want to see uh, how many meetings I have tomorrow. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to jump into deep research mode. And this research mode takes a very, very long time. It's not just going to quickly access your calendar and come back with a number of meetings. But that's really not functional. In that time, I can go to my calendar and just take a look. The other thing worth noting is that if we try and pause this, you're gonna see it says, hey, you've only got so many more deep research requests that you can use this month. And so this is already a capped usage. The next downside is its capabilities. So let's go back into our sources. Let's switch over to Gmail, drop our calendar and try and write an email. So in this prompt, I'm just gonna run, please send an email to one of my other email addresses, subject, hello, body, how are you? So I'm gonna go ahead and send this. And once again, it's diving into a research project. Like 10 minutes later, it finishes, but this time we get a message and the message says, hey, basically we don't have that capability yet. The primary function right now is really only a read function. You can see that right here, which in my mind really makes this not usable. So let's do a quick recap. First of all, it's really slow and difficult to use and access. Two, it has a capped usage and three, extremely limited capabilities. Now let's compare this to something like Claude. So when we come in here, we can click on this icon and you can see all the apps. Now I've already added these in, but if you haven't, you can click on add integrations and you can go through and select the apps that you want to add in. And if you wanna add in a custom integration, you can do that right here. But heading back over into our chat window, let's try out a prompt. Please check my calendar and tell me how many meetings I have tomorrow. And right away, you can see that it's listed out in a matter of seconds, everything that I've got going on tomorrow. And if I wanna take it one step further, please help me prepare for my meetings. And just like that, it went through my drive folder, emails and everything else to try and help me prepare for my meetings tomorrow. Now it is worth noting that even Claude is lacking a lot of the capabilities through their MCP. For example, if you ask it to create a meeting on the calendar for like tomorrow at noon, it's gonna come back and say, hey, I don't have the ability to actually create this, but it'll come back and tell you what meetings you have, when you have free time, et cetera. So essentially it seems like it has about the same capabilities out of the box uh, as GPT with the exception of no rate limits that we found yet and exceptionally faster use of the protocol. So to sum up, I think the ChatGPT has a lot of opportunities with this. It just isn't quite there yet. In my opinion, if you want to use MCP today, using Claude is probably one of the fastest and best options for it or building out custom workflows in something like Inadent, Make, or Zapier. But I can't help but wonder once this gets out of beta and starts being released in broader scale, uh, if we'll see a drastic increase in the capabilities of this functionality within GPT. And I, just like many others, will be very excited for that. Guys, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to like and subscribe. And again, don't forget to check out the free community link down below, and I will see you in the next video.